Daily Wire cultural correspondent Michael Knowles wrote an excellent article this week called An Actual Conservative's Guide to the Alt-Right, Eight Things You Need to Know. I'm sure some of you saw it and said to yourself, I would like to read that article. If it didn't involve laboriously running my eyes back and forth over the page, identifying letters and stringing them together to make words, which I would then have to go through all the trouble of understanding. Fortunately, it's for lazy, ignorant, unmotivated people like yourselves that we have The Andrew Clavin Show. So today we're going to summarize Noel's article exactly as if we had read it ourselves, instead of getting distracted by a marathon rerun of the first season of Big Brother. What are the eight things you need to know about the alt-right? the motley collection of low-life racists and Nazi slave minds who fooled themselves into thinking that being ironical about the fact that they're evil somehow saves them from being the moral scum they obviously are. Okay, what are the other seven things you need to know? Number two, racism is the movement's central premise. White identity is a favorite theme of alt-writers because it allows them to feel superior to other people without having to take the trouble to actually accomplish anything. Sure, a black person might hit a home run or create a work of art, but alt-writers have pink-colored skin, so they're special because something, something, something. Number three, the alt-right is anti-Semitic. The alt-right likes to isolate and make fun of Jewish people by putting parentheses around their names. So you may say, well, Albert Einstein explained space-time, and Jonas Salk cured polio, and men like Louis B. Mayer invented the American movie business, but the alt-right would answer, yes, but we put parentheses around their names. So that's a big accomplishment, too. Number four, the alt-right is tech-savvy with roots in Silicon Valley. That's good news because it means they're actually unlikely to engage in any activity that might cause them to reproduce. Number five, the alt-right loves The Matrix because it's a film produced by Jews, starring a black man, and written and directed by two sexually submissive men who ultimately decided they were actually women. So I guess the alt-right just likes that sort of thing. Number six, the alt-right loves Christendom but rejects Christianity. You see, the European races began as a group of thuggish rapists and murderers but were slowly civilized by their worship of a globalist Jewish man. The alt-right wants to keep the European races but lose the Jewish man. What could go wrong? Number seven, the alt-right practices a satirical religion called Kek in which they worship a cartoon frog because they're white people and therefore superior to people who don't worship cartoon frogs. And eight, the alt-right wants to burn American politics to the ground. To help them, the Daily Wire has built a large cardboard house labeled American politics and invited the alt-right to step inside and burn it to the ground. This is going to be fun. Trigger warning, I'm Andrew Claven, and this is The Andrew Claven Show. I feel hunky-dunky. Life is tickety-boo Birds are winging, also singing hunky dunky doo Ship-shaped dipsy-topsy The world is zippity-zing It's a wonderful day, hurrah, hooray It makes me want to sing Oh, hurrah, hooray Oh, hooray, hurrah Hooray, hurrah, all right, we're back. And the Clavelandist weekend seems to have begun early with a massive train wreck in Hoboken, New Jersey. Over 100 people injured, which is uh, double trouble because you're not only hurt, you're in Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, But (laughs) it can only get worse, but you can stave it off by getting your copy of The Great Good Thing, my memoir, The Great Good Thing, A Secular Jew Comes to Faith in Christ. You can get it for free, I think. You still can get it for free if you uh, just subscribe to The Daily Wire. I'll be on Ben's show later on. We'll be talking about it. I think we're just going to dress up in sumo diapers and just bang into each other. hoping. But anyway, uh, if you if you do subscribe, you can watch this entire show run, streaming live right this minute on The Daily Wire website. If not, you get it for 15 minutes on Facebook and YouTube, and then a gigantic curtain falls over your eyes. And not only can you not see this, you can't see anything for hours on end. But you can come to The Daily Wire site and listen to it or download it later on iTunes or SoundCloud. All right, so this was the week of the first debate, and now, as was foretold to you on the show, the polls are starting to come in to show that people feel that Trump lost, and he's starting to lose a little ground in the polls. Here's from 538. This is the Nate Silver site that does a, a pretty good job of kind of 
parsing the polls, you know, thinking about what they mean and what we should watch out about. He says, every scientific poll we've encountered so far suggests that voters thought Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump in Monday night's debate. In fact, some of them showed her winning by a wide margin, wide enough to make it a good bet, though not a guarantee that she'll gain in horse race polls against Trump over the next week or so. So far, we've seen just two polls released that tested Clinton's standing against Trump after the debate. They have pretty good news for Clinton, but I'd recommend some caution until we get more data. The polls have her either three points up or five points up, and that's a bounce from where she was before, is one or two points. Silver says the reason to be cautious, there are reasons to be cautious. Polls conducted over a one or two day period, like the morning consult and echelon polls, can suffer from low response rates since the pollsters won't have time to recontact voters who they missed the first time around. That could plausibly bias the poll toward whichever candidate has the most enthusiastic supporters at the time of the poll, making it less represent, representative. Another complication is that it can be hard to separate voters' reaction to the debate itself from their, their reaction to the media's reaction to the debate. And we know what the media's reaction to the debate is. Here is from Newsbusters. You remember, at, at the last minute on this thing, Hillary Clinton unleashed this clearly prepared attack about Miss Universe, right? Let, let's play that. Let's play, let's play the cut of this is the end of the debate. Hillary Clinton obviously had this in, in her back pocket and also had the press saddled up. They, she had them primed to catch up to it. So here she goes. This is a man who has called women pigs, slobs and dogs and someone who has said pregnancy is an inconvenience to employers who has said, said women don't deserve equal pay unless they do as good a job as Didn't men. And one of the worst things he said was about a woman in a beauty contest. He loves beauty contests, supporting them and hanging around them. And he called this woman Miss Piggy. Then he called her Miss Housekeeping because she was Latina. Donald, she has a name. Where did you find Her this? name Where is did Alicia you find this? Machado. Where did you find And it? she has become a U.S. citizen, and you can bet oh, really? she's going to vote okay. this November. Okay, good. Okay, Alicia Machado, Miss Venezuela in 1995, went on to become Miss Universe in 1996. And then, by her own testimony, she said after she won, all she wanted to do was eat, eat, and eat. That is a direct quote. She gained a lot of weight. Trump complained about it, called her names. Here's from our friends at Newsbusters. Once again, ABC, CBS, and NBC have ignored a major news story that could be embarrassing to Hillary Clinton and have national implications while promoting a negative and trivial Trump story initially pushed by the Clinton campaign. On September 23rd, news broke that during the now infamous investigation into Clinton's emails, <coughs> the FBI granted Clinton's former chief of staff, Cheryl Mills, immunity. House Oversight Chairman Jason Chavitz called Mills's immunity beyond explanation, adding that the FBI was handing out immunity agreements like candy, yet neither ABC, CBS, nor NBC ever even mentioned this story once. This is amazing. Comey, we'll get back to this, but Comey has been on Capitol Hill getting grilled savagely by the House, by congressmen. The same networks that have failed to cover the Mills story since it broke on September 23rd, that's now six days ago, were quick to devote a full 19 minutes and 40 seconds, 20 minutes, to the controversy over Trump allegedly calling a former Miss Universe Miss Piggy and Miss Housekeeping, which I guess was supposed to be an attack on the fact that she's Latina. All right. So, so this, is, this is what Trump said at the time. This is number six. Uh, this is what Trump said about... Uh, this is part of a Hillary Clinton ad. She actually put out an ad about Alicia Machado. And this is what he said about her at the time. She weighed 118 pounds or 117 pounds, and she went up to 160 or 70. So this is somebody that likes to eat. <laughs> okay. So Now, remember, this is right when Trump had taken over the contest. So he's taken over the contest. So he's got a business interest in this woman going around and being beautiful, which she was. But she got apparently overweight. So now she's he's fat shaming her. Was just, I always love these these ideas that you're not supposed to slut shame or fat shame. You know, you don't the, the idea behind these these uh, accusations is absurd because the idea is that your shame comes from me, that your shame comes from my saying nasty things about it. No one should say nasty things about other people. Of course, we should all be polite to one another. But your shame is there anyway. Believe me, all of us feel shame about any number of things. It is a standing 
fact about the about human nature. People have been trying to explain it forever. I, some of us like to think it's because of original sin, but even the people who don't believe in original sin, like Sigmund Freud, had to come up with elaborate mythologies about why people feel guilty and shame and ashamed all the time. And the left's idea that if they can just control what they say about you, what other people say about you, that shame will go away is a lie. But here is Donald Trump, who is hilarious because he's such a slob. You know, it's hard. I mean, I really dislike feminism. They're rude, they're mean, they're one-sided, they're bullies. But what can you say? I mean, if they've got a target, they, 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 you know, he's got a target the size of a barn door. So Donald Trump goes on uh, Fox and Friends, the morning show, and he doubles down on this. They ask him about it. The very last question, which he brought up, the, uh, the person that became, a, you know, I know that person. That person was a Miss Universe person, mm-hmm. and she was the worst we ever had. The worst, the absolute worst, as she was impossible. And she was a Miss Universe contestant and ultimately a winner who they had a tremendously difficult time with as Miss Universe. She was the winner and, uh, you know, she gained a massive amount of weight and uh, it was it was a real problem. So he just he just won't stop. And you know the funny thing about it is it is it is slobbish and disgusting. But you can see it from like a businessman's point of view. He's got this investment in this contest, and now the beautiful girl has gone off, and she's not as beautiful as she's supposed to be. So now Alicia is on TV, and she is driving this home, and she's doing it very very well. Here she is with Anderson Cooper. He was really aggressive. He was really rude. He was a bad person with me. And that is the, the story that I need to share when, when for you said, my community. When you said we that can't accept, we can't accept more insults for my Latin community. No more. No more insults for the women. You said that he, I know he had very called well, you, Mr. Trump. You said that he had called you. Ms. And I Piggy. can see the same person that I met. 20 years ago. All right, so this is real. This is really well done. She's obviously been coached in what to say. It's my community. It's my community. The Spanish people, you know, the entire Spanish people are now being insulted by this whole thing. Now, there is a lot of stuff that's not being played up in American papers, but it is being played up overseas and in cheap tabloids like The Sun, uh, that she has a kind of spotty past. Uh, shortly after she won her crown in the late 90s, this is as being reported from uh, Fox News here, picking it up from the overseas pe- press. A judge in Venezuela accused Machado of threatening to kill him after he indicted her then-boyfriend for attempted murder. Machado threatened to ruin my career as a judge and kill me, Judge Maximiliano Funmayar said at the time. Her boyfriend, Juan Rafael Rodriguez Rigetti, was accused of shooting and wounding his sister's husband, who he blamed for his sister's suicide. And she also, she was also in this some kind of weird Spanish TV thing where she committed sex, had sex on air, all this stuff. Of course, none of that really matters for what Trump did. It has nothing to do with it, but I'm bringing it up just so I can. So <clears throat> so I was going back because, of course, all of us on the right look at Hillary Clinton and think this woman was the, the enemy of every woman who got molested by her husband, molested, chased, raped, with all these different accusations. And so I wanted to go back and look at this for my myself because – there are a lot of things that have now become sort of on the right. They've become words that just you, you speak about Hillary Clinton, things you say about her that may not be true. For instance, there's this one idea that she got fired from the Watergate committee when she was an aide on the Watergate investigative committee and she was fired and they said she was a bad person. It didn't happen. She was never fired off the committee. There was a guy who said bad things about her, but, you know, people can say bad things about anybody. It just didn't happen. So I wanted to go back because there's, you know, obviously there's, there's not a lot of uh, proof that Hillary was conspiring against this woman, but I did find a lot of stuff. We're going to come back to it in a minute, but first I have to say goodbye to the folks on Facebook and YouTube. Come on over to The Daily Wire, and we will continue the conversation.